Hey there boys, today we're going to be talking about double special. I think this is a topic that hasn't been covered in quite a while, so I kind of wanted to talk about where it is at the moment. After double special was nerfed in season 22, a lot of people considered it to basically just be completely dead and went back to their standard primary special heavy loadouts. Or they were blueberries and have had two primaries and Thunderlord on since the start. And while Double Special has certainly lost a lot of its potency, it still has a lot of completely irreplaceable advantages, so we're going to be talking about what those are, how you can use Double Special efficiently, and when it is the best choice to use it. Firstly, let's talk broadly about what the purpose of Double Special is, and why it is still an advantage in many cases today. Originally, Double Special was a thing because it gave you increased heavy ammo drops compared to having a primary on, you just basically had better odds at ammo by not having a primary on than you did with a primary equipped. However, something a lot of people just kind of ignored about that was that special weapons in general are just more powerful than primaries. Nowadays, we have special weapons that are designed for utility, we have special weapons that are designed for ag clear, and as always, we have had special weapons designed for DPS. And in most cases, special weapons are better at all three categories for whatever they're specialized in. For example, waveframes are much better ag clear than any primary. Trace rifles still have some of the best utility in the game. You can kind of just wave them around at objectives and it will just hit them. A great example is stuff like panels for Deepstone Crypt, as well as suppressing in the same raid. In addition to a much better damage output than any primaries, the trace rifles also have the utility of being able to switch to other special weapons and not lose the ammo. That's the big advantage in special weapons right now, in that you can switch to other special weapons and not lose ammo. Which is why you might see things like the shoot to loot trace rifle used so heavily, even though we have SMGs with shoot to loot that could also have shoot to loot with infinite ammo. We also recently got an additional weapon that is great in double special in the Indebted Kindness, and this thing has an absolutely insane damage profile. It one-shots most red bars even in Grandmaster difficulties, and it will one-shot orange bars in lower difficulties, as well as absolutely chunking barrier shields when radiant or when you have sidearm barrier. And just to make this weapon even better, it also has additional utility in being able to spawn ammo with ammo finder mods as if it's a primary. I do believe that this is a unintended behavior and might end up getting patched in the future, but as it sits now, this is how the weapon works. And finally we have the DPS. While you might have had an argument to use primaries over specials for the other two use cases, there really just isn't one for DPS. When you look at the DPS specialized special weapons, stuff like shotguns, snipers, and occasionally fusion rifles, you'll see that there is just a clear advantage for them. In fact, some special weapon configurations can even reach the damage of some of the lower end heavy weapons in the game. So we've laid out all of these advantages for special weapons, now we're going to look at the disadvantages. And the biggest disadvantage is obviously that they have a limited ammo supply. And the other big deal is that it's not able to produce ammo using finder mods. After the double special nerf, we don't have a lot of ways to produce guaranteed bricks, especially for ourselves. And this is pretty much the biggest or arguably even the only argument for primaries still having a very good place in the meta right now. Even though we lost the absolutely absurd ammo economy of double special with the nerf, we still are able to maintain special ammo and use special weapons effectively, and remember that with special weapons being more powerful, this could still be considered a more optimal loadout. If you are going to be using a primary with the purpose of generating ammo through ag clear, I highly recommend using an exotic. Typically they are better at ag clear, with stuff like Sunshot and Trinity Ghoul existing, and they also will generate the ammo with fewer kills required per brick. Otherwise, I recommend having double special weapons, they're in general more powerful, and also more versatile because they allow you to switch to other special weapons without losing ammo. So now I want to talk about how you should run double special. If you're somebody who hasn't run double special after the nerf yet and you want to see how to do it, we're going to go ahead and look at some of these strategies because it does require a little bit of thinking now without the absurd economy that it used to have. And the biggest and easiest thing you could do is to just start using scavenger mods so that you get more ammo. It can also help out and increase the efficiency of the mod by having two weapons that use the same element in your loadout. For example, if you're going to be using Indebted Kindness, I recommend using the Arc Eager Edge Sword instead of the Void one in situations where you'd use it. That way you get more sword ammo with the Arc Scavenger mod as well as more ammo for the sidearm. It's actually that reason that I'm a little excited about the new Eager Edge Sword coming out, because it's going to have access to permeability, so we'll be able to do it with solar weapons now. And if you're curious, I am going to be farming that sword as soon as possible and covering it as early as I can, so make sure you stay tuned for that in the future. 
But getting back on topic to maintaining double special, you'll want to use special finisher whenever you can. It's a very powerful mod that a lot of people just seem to overlook. It creates a guaranteed brick out of just three armor charges or three orbs. This could even be two orbs if you use the charged up mod. However, I would recommend just specking into making more orbs instead. There are a ton of different ways to generate orbs, and if you're not sure what the best way to do it is, you could go read through. I recommend using either siphon mods or the mods on your gauntlets to generate orbs with the most used ability for your killing. Otherwise, you should be aware of the old double special method of not holding the weapon that you need ammo for. That way you are more likely to get drops for that weapon type. It's much more complicated than what I just made it sound like, and if you are interested in learning about the full mechanics behind Heavy, I do have a video covering it and it is pretty relevant, so I will leave a link in the description below if you want to watch that. And lastly, there is a perk available on special weapons called Lead for Gold, which gives them ammo whenever you pick up Heavy. This is a pretty silly perk whenever you're using a primary, because you're typically just getting a lot of special anyway. However, Lead for Gold is very good in double special, because typically you're not getting a lot of special ammo bricks while you're holding a special weapon, and this allows you to get some special ammo out of heavy bricks. It's definitely a great perk on the utility and ag clear weapons, however I would be careful about using it on DPS weapons, because typically it's better to have a good reload perk. However, there are some weapons like Cartesian Coordinate I would still use Lead for Gold on, just for a lack of better reload options. And don't worry if you don't have a god roll on Cartesian Coordinate, because if Banshee gave me a nickel for every time he sold Cartesian Coordinate, I would have 6 nickels, which isn't that many, but it's kinda weird. Anyways, last thing I want to talk about is the best weapons for double special. In general, it's going to be double DPS weapons, stuff like shotgun swapping obviously is very good for DPS setups. However, really I want to talk about the utility and egg clear weapons you use in double special so that you have a more versatile loadout and not just something that is specialized for DPS. And the top three obvious choices for me, ironically, are actually all arc oddly, even though solar is typically the best element. They're going to be indebted kindness, forbearance, and Path of Least Resistance. I think that these three really just capitalize on covering the best parts about special weapons for non-DPS purposes. Obviously, Forbearance doesn't need an introduction as being pretty much the best ag clear weapon in the game. Indicted Kindness has extremely unique utility by having very good damage, being able to produce ammo finder bricks, and also having decent ag clear with its splash, making it one of the most universally versatile weapons in the game right now. Then finally, there's Path of Least Resistance. It is basically the king of utility. I recommend using something like Volt Shot and Shoot to Loot. Shoot to Loot is the big deal on it. Basically, it lets you pick up ammo from far away, which is surprisingly useful in a lot of situations. And remember, it also reloads all three of your weapons, including the weapon that you shot the brick on. Shoot to Loot is another topic that I actually covered in its own video because it's much more complicated than a lot of people are aware. So I'll leave that in the description if you're interested as well. There are also plenty of alternatives to some of these weapons, like other wave frames, other trace rifles, however I really think that these are just the kings of what we use double special for. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what weapons you like to use for double special. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one, bye bye.